because every doctor thinks they know more about the cavity echo of my feet than I do. Because it's a dirty word where every stranger self-discloses their arms, skin, fevers like family secret because bodies aren't meant to live in whisper because whole events still rampless. How clipboards are biggest fear monger because everyone can name that one token disabled or deaf poet who is usually white and always straight. And because after speaking as an expert, louder in a packed auditorium during any q a someone eventually doesn't ask a question but says you're not that you'll get better soon as though i haven't measured my sternum into a city of mris gazed at comet splatters of x-rays hospital gown high hat ultrasounds my seasons best as though my soundtrack isn't base of prescription, bottles gone empty. Every lost friend, every abled grimace like death and somewhere joy in the crook of toes equals some cold nobody wants to catch. And about colds, every January, some people conflate their dalliance with cough syrup with my blacking out at laundromats, subways, a new partner's bedroom. How concave of chest is altar where friends stopped checking in, forgot to invite. Candlelit rib for every time someone in new pain says, I, I get it now. An incantation for every time you discuss pain forever in your skull. A friend says, yeah, I get headaches when I'm hungover too. For if you don't make a potluck, potluck meeting, Twitter hour, you might be the dog taken out back. Your work silenced for its own misery. Together, we pass lidocaine and salumpas the way our aunties share adobo recipes. We inherit collective care because we swap how-tos on advocacy with nurse, specialist, to oncologist, and again, to accessoride our texts from scratch to survive spasm song because another date asked you about your leg and you know you'll never see them again and nobody understands rejection like a sick crip who brings you weed and a casserole tells you to not move a muscle. They'll get the tea. Hope still twined on their throats. We have been a movement, all of us, an inhale as the closest sunset windowsill. As somebody tries to text fried, but autocorrect anticipates grief. Same thing. I think it's fascinating because there's this, it's not new, right? But there's this burgeoning interest by presumably able um, artists, writers, and poets. And for me, disabled poetics has always been, has always been a form of understanding a non-linear pace, has always been a form of being very fluid and also very restricted, right? Um, in another interview, people asked me about my pro writing process. And I said, whenever my body mind lets me, whenever it's able. And I think disability poetics lets mm -hmm. us undo and excavate any predisposed colonial understandings of how words move on a page, of how words engage and embody in our bodies. Uh, disabled poetics for me allows us to overlap because I believe in disability justice. And with that kind and level of pivot and intimacy, disability justice and disability poetics give us a plane where we can question what actually poetry is. Um, it makes us, I think because our bodies aren't mainstream 
or considered necessarily in the vast world as conventional. We have to approach an unconventional way, unconventional energies and forces and love um, with our words and the ways we craft poems and storytelling. There's no way if I am typing right now where you and I are in a writing workshop together and I have a spasm or somebody, you know, has a panic attack or somebody gets a vision blurry during that time that the poem is going to move the same way in any of those experiences. And disability poetics and disabled poetics gives us that room to acknowledge that um, what is form when we create it? Right, and what is form when we move with it in our bodies, in our body minds, in our the way we perceive our spirit and our mental health. And I think it also calls to attention a mourning, like not in trope, but I know so many disabled artists who are no longer here with us, right? Through ableism, through colonialism, through racism. And so for me, disability poetics allows me a broader channel and a pistolary channel to communicate with disabled artists and also to make us, because we care about the very base value, right? A very base value of, nor of like accessibility um, allows us to bring more people in, right? I feel like sometimes poetry, the industry in the United States can be very gatekeeping and very white and heterosexual and abled and all those things in that larger empire umbrella. And I feel that disability poetics is that channel and conduit to actually say poetry can be and is and has always been for everyone. And disability is one facet. And look how disability, for me, as a transgender, non-Black person of color from a community of migrants, disability poetics was a natural tilt for me. And in this poem, I think there are a lot of very interesting movements in disability poetics. And in this, I'm saying, oh, I'm going to operate um, what is it in quatrains or in, in fours, right? Threes and fours, which is very conventional. I feel like it's very American standard. But here are brackets. Here are ways in syntax, in breath. Oftentimes, Kenny, the way I write is very conversational. Um, I feel like in my ability to listen and understand bodies because I'm a theater trained person, it's supersonic. It moves through my body in a rhythmic way that's very, honestly, Philippinex, right? That's very of my um, ethnic and racial culture. But it's also how I feel disability poetics moves for me is that we make gestures, we make forces, we make specific strategies and tools in our poems that best reflect who we honestly are for that moment and who we honestly want to be for our community, for our future, and the way we dialect. And this poem is just a very interestingly loving way of you'll sense these tinges of sarcasm, right? If you don't, if you don't know me in person, let me tell you that's really who I am. And when you're spooned out, if you're in high pain, you have multiple migraines, a back spasm, you had some trauma activate your spirit. You, I'm speaking. I should use I statements actually. I feel like I am very catty. I am very snippy. And then I'm also very open in intimacy. There's this place that I feel disabled in the wide umbrella for me, that my capacity to expand in all the emotion is really quick and very slow. Like, what is time? And I think this poem does that. It measures really all of these inflections, all these episodic moments of what it is to be in this body mind and moves you through here. And then says, what about up here? Then down here, and then here's this very quiet place. And I think something about disability and disability poetics, and for me, liberatory poetics and cultural strategy, first and foremost, always asks us to examine what's underneath and what's around. There's a thing in front of you, no? That thing is never at face value. There's always something that brought it there. There's always something contextually. And so as a disabled poet and within this poem, I think it's really important to examine what all of those contexts are, whether that's systemic oppression, whether that's internalized ableism, whether that's the onslaught of lack of intimacy due to ableism, um, whether it's that minimizing, there's this piece about there are two points in the poem that I always snicker at. 
because I'm always using, um, <laughs> I'm always extracting, obviously as a poet, real life conversations, but almost in verbatim. Somebody's like, oh yeah, I had a headache, so I'm drunk too. And I'm like, oh friend, you know? And so much of disability poetics is that moment of just that bated breath. And you're just like, no. <laughs> but here is my world. And here is how I open it. And here are all the loving people, as you see, right? I'm not just, I, I worry about disability poetics and disability work in that it's been usurped as this individualist, imperialist, very particular way of um, the big hero where there's one person and they get this done and the bootstraps and haha, -ha, you know, this trope and this inspirational piece that's like, that's not real for me. I have friends when I am fucking broke who are like, I will get you delivery. You cannot pay rent. Here you go. I'm going to bring you meds. I'm going to cook you something. And even if we're in distance, disabled people, we create relationships, disabled artists. I mean, Kenny, look, we are miles and miles across ocean, right? Pre-COVID, this isn't new for a lot of disabled people. This is how we congregate and commune within our limited privilege or access. So I wanted to also highlight what it means to be in distance with one another and yet still find kinship. And I think there's nothing more in disability poetics really is to what, like how do we find the kinship within ourselves, within our communities, in that tension? How do we do it in distance from ourselves when we're forced away, put away, locked away, denied, um, gaslit from ourselves with other people? There's always going to be somewhere there's joy. I can't, you know, I'm a human. Um, it's not always all miserable, but I think it is also time in disability poetics where we're ruminating not just on the misery, but wow, even, even after all this, despite, outside of all this, look at this. I have medicine and food and there's somebody to text. I mean, I don't know. I feel like survival poetics and Poetics of a lot of people who face such intense violence. Um, the answers we create aren't on a linear schematic. And when you're talking about disability poetics, to me, it's just like access care. It's like finding accessibility with a friend or a new person. You're carving out a new way of communication. And every interaction, every climate is different. I don't think poetry is... I think poetry may reflect just that, just this hella way of moving through different forms, different embodiments, different feelings, different breaths. In a way, I feel that has so much more savvy. Maybe it's just, I'm a fancy pants and I just think disabled people are the coolest and the dopest and the bestest.